Okay, so shall we begin with a word of prayer? Mm. Father God, we bow before you and ask for your blessing upon this your study. We give thanks for your word. We give thanks that we have a firm foundation as we, we put our trust in your word amidst the shifting sands of this world. We know when we lean on you, we have hope. And we ask for your spirit to be with us and cleanse us from unrighteousness. And Father, I pray you help me present this here study. And I want to do the best I can to discuss a topic which has very rarely been discussed, and that's the altar of Ezekiel's temple vision. And we ask your blessing upon this here study in Jesus' name. Amen. So this is my 10th presentation of a Bible-based chronological study with focus on the book of Judges. Um, the previous presentation, I looked at some connections to the number 666 that came up in sort of time spans and so forth. Uh, it was quite a lot of information, and I'm going to try to just pace it, and not so much information in this year's study. Uh, but it does still deal with the number 666 as, as a part of the theme that I'm looking to uh, cover in this year's presentation. I have been, for nearly a year, I've been uh, studying with a group uh, in the UK, and just going through the book of Ezekiel. And uh, just as sort of diving into it, I'm just sort of seeing things which maybe haven't been seen before. And uh, I'm not, it's not too often that you would get a, a sermon dealing with Ezekiel's altar as a specific focus, but that's, uh, um, that's, that's the subject of this year presentation. Uh, just as a background, uh, Ezekiel has his temple vision in the 25th year of our captivity, he says. So when he's saying our captivity, it's, uh, he's linking the captivity of Jehoiachin Jehoi Jehoi with his. He's sort of uh, assimilating himself with that. And it says, in the beginning of the year, in the 10th day of the month, in the 14th year that the city was smitten, so... 14 years, or the 14th year, is, you can uh, take that as a cardinal count, or an ordinal count, I think, or ordinal count, sorry. So it would be like 13 years and two months, I believe, or so after the city was smitten. In the selfsame day, the hand of the Lord was upon me and brought me thither. So, yeah, so I have there, this is the 13th and last date brought to view in the book of Ezekiel. Although there was one later date mentioned earlier in the book that related to Egypt. So the 25th year uh, is from March 597 BC, the captivity of Jehoiachin, which is a date that I have used to springboard to connect to other dates. March 16th. Yeah, specifically March 16th. Yeah. So that occurred in uh, Jehoiachin's ascension year. So that there, ascension year, he had only came to the throne about 100 days or so before that. And his first year then would have been counted in the autumn of 597 BC. So um, Ezekiel began his prophesying in the 30th year, in the fifth year of Jehoiachin's captivity. Thus, being an additional 20 years from the 30th year would make this the 50th year and therefore indicating a jubilee year. So, he's in the 25th year, and he began his prophesying in the 5th year, and he sp uh, specified the 30th year of, uh, it doesn't actually say what, but that would take us back to the year 622, and that would be the year 
of Josiah's Passover. So there's an additional 20 years has occurred. So this would be the 50th year. And therefore it links to a jubilee year. So um, now technically, so you're in 592 and you're in 573. So it's 19 years, right? Yes. But the 50th year then is going to be in the fall because it's the Jubilee starts on the 10th day of Rosh Hashanah. Mm -hmm. So that means it's the 20th year, right, once you get mm -hmm. there. But it's really only 19 years. And, and this, these types of things confuse people to no end. I mean, I saw, you know, read where professional chronologists, biblical chronologists, get totally everything turned around when they start to look at these things. They're not really sure what to do. Because with this date, you got the 25th year, the 14th year, and, um, and you have to say, how does that fit in with when Jerusalem is destroyed? And so those create problems. And people have tried to create solutions that actually are obviously wrong, but they can't see that they're wrong. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so there I do mention that there is some debate as to whether Jerusalem was destroyed in 587 or 586. If we count Ezekiel's captivity as occurring at the same year as Jehoiachin's, we need merely to subtract 14 years from 25 years to find the span between the two events, which yields 11 years. So if Ezekiel was taken captive in 597, Jerusalem was destroyed 11 years later in 586 BC. Okay, you, you used the word simply. I think you said we just simply have to do this. Did I? Yeah, but, okay. but it's actually not that straightforward mm -hmm. because when he's counting in the 14th year, He's not counting spring to spring, fall to fall. He's simply doing an ordinal count, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the 14th year since the city was smitten. He's, he's not thinking fall or spring or anything like that. But when he's talking about the 5 and 20th year, if he had been 11 days earlier, it would have been the, five, uh, the 4 and 20th year, right? Because he's counting that count fall to fall because he's counting the years of the captivity as the years of Jehoiachin's reign, if Jehoiachin had still been reigning. And in a sense, Ezekiel considers Jehoiachin the rightful king and Zedekiah not the rightful king. And it's going to be through Jehoiachin that Christ descends. He's a, you know, that's his ancestor, where Zedekiah is not an ancestor of Christ. Mm -hmm. so, so those points that people often miss and when they try to place this uh, this year, they, mm -hmm. they don't often put it in 573. They put it in 574. And, and you can see why they do that. And they put it in 593. And then they have 587. They move everything over. But then they create other problems. Mm -hmm. right? So there's all these things have to be considered. And it's not simple. <laughs> mm -hmm. You don't just simply do that. Okay, yes. Yeah. Um, we have seen this here, date 573, connected to the 70 years as a span and the 70 AD as a date. We have seen that from 70 AD there was a period of 36 years prior to that. That takes us to 34 AD. And that then at the 490, or the 70 week prophecy, and the 70 years as a span, the Babylonian captivity ended in 537, and Ezekiel, he's here in 573, and there's a 36 year period, and then it's going to be 49 years of a jubilee. 
just as an additional aspect, we looked at the numbers 37 and 73. So Christ was born in 4 BC. And you have 37 years there. And then it's going to be 73 years to 70 AD. And here we have like a mirror. If we just discount the, the 5, the 37, and the 73 as well there. So, and then there's other uh, sort of date, dates and spans connected there. And that with you could connect 607. And you go back here to the seven, uh, the captivity. You've another 34 years, which connects to 34 AD, and then 607. And then as an inclusive count, it's uh, yeah, from here, it's 607 years. So you have that as a span, and that as a date as well. Just a question regarding, um, so the 73 and the 37. Now this was not a number group of numbers you discovered. Somebody else mm -hmm. has noticed these. Now, what do they think they mean? Why 73 and 37? Or is they just, it's just what they notice, but they don't have any, or do you have an explanation of what these numbers are supposed to represent? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think they've made this connection because they don't no. have the chronology. No, I realize, but they had it there in uh, Genesis. Yes. Okay. And so they just relate it to the prime numbers, the 37th prime number is... Okay, so they're just showing that the Bible is this mathematical yes. construction. That's to them, but they're not mm -hmm. giving any symbol for this number. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, do you have something that tries to explain this symbol? I mean, we have a 3 and a 7 together, mm -hmm. so a completion and perfection number together. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, we have things like the ten plagues of Egypt, but, and then seven plagues at the end of the world. So we have a th three, maybe a extra there, mm -hmm. so seven. So there's maybe that sort of similar things. You have ten tribes, ten, ten nations, ten toes, or whatever it is, and then three yeah. are plucked up. Mm -hmm. um, so those seem to... Yeah. Sort of it's just most of the symbols we have, you know, like... They're connected to something like 217 that's connected to July uh, 21st, right? So it, it mm -hmm. becomes a symbol for midnight. Mm -hmm. We don't have any symbol for 37 or 73. Yes, we, well, we had looked in 321 AD with the, the Sunday law, the Constantine being on March 7th. 7th, 7th of March, so you have a 73 there. Mm -hmm. And then also another one occurring on the 3rd of July. So yeah, a, a, okay. A three, so they can represent, I'm just thinking, just going back to Genesis, you know, we have mm -hmm. these numbers. They should be symbols of something. When we have a symbol, we put it on a line. It, it means something right here. Mm -hmm. But I guess we, we place it there and we can notice it with the, the Sunday laws. So June mm -hmm. or July 3rd and uh, March 7th. And... Um, but I just, I'm just trying to figure out this, this symbol. Um, you know, because it, it needs to mean something, but I'm not mm -hmm. sure what it means yet. Added together, they come to 110. Yeah. So it connects with Joseph's age when he died and Joshua's age when he died. Mm -hmm. Half of a 220, 11. Yeah. You know, maybe, I don't know. There's maybe other things you could Yeah, it's just if we have it on a line, I usually mm -hmm. like that symbol to mean something. It's just like mm -hmm. one of the things we didn't really discuss with 666 is that this is about the transition from uh, Babylonian mysticism moving to Rome, mm -hmm. right? First pagan Rome, and then the 666 years uh, transferring it to papal Rome, right? So... You know, we, we know 666 has to do with the Sunday law, but it also has to do with uh, the mystery of iniquity and Babylonian mysticism, 
Right. So mm -hmm. the 36, we know that's a shorthand for 666. But the 37 and the 73, I know you placed it with those two Sunday laws, but I don't know if that's the pr that's not really the primary reference. It, so that's mm -hmm. what I'm wondering about. If, if we have it on the line, what does it mean? Because that's the most important thing about numbers is they symbolize something. Mm -hmm. The mathematical part of it just is a secondary uh, part. I mean, it's just that mm -hmm. it's math and you can confirm those numbers fit here or wherever they're going to fit, but they still need to mean something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I've just seen the prop, cop, uh, pop up. So this is a Nell White statement. She says, Ezekiel saw in the vision a man whose appearance was like brass. So this is relating to Ezekiel chapter 40 and this year temple vision. He stood in the gate of a house and he measured all the building with the reed in his hand, all the little chambers and doorways and archers and pillars and the gate looking towards the east. And every least item was recorded according to the measurement by the reed. Then the glory of the God came in at the end. He said, show the house to the house of Israel that they may be ashamed of their iniquities. Let them measure the pattern. This is the law of the house. Upon the top of the mountain, the whole limit thereof shall be, whole, shall be most holy. Behold, this is the law of the house. So she's quoting there Ezekiel 43, verses 10 to 12. And then she says, We do now most need to be seen. We do now we do now most need to see persons whose characters and works measure life and things by the exact measurement of God. A righteous life in honest, faithful dealings makes the whole righteous stature and structure. So here we see that Ellen White is applying a symbolic application to the temple as relating to our character. And so... Um, there's some debate in the Christian world that this year temple is relating to an actual temple which was maybe meant to have been built after the 70 years of Babylonian captivity, but it never came about. Some people uh, see it as the millennial temple, that after the 1,000 years Christ comes down to the earth and this year temple is built then. But we know that that, that isn't the case, and I, my per personal understanding that it has uh, symbolic, symbolic uh, applications, and I think more particularly to this movement than anywhere. Uh, there's a lot of things here that I believe we can see that uh, doesn't really apply to other, the other, other people would just see it as meaningless. Okay, so you bring up something that relates to my question, because... If we're looking at Genesis 1, it's going to have this 37 and 73. And the numbers there are completion and perfection coming together. Um, and here he's going to be building the temple. That maybe it has to do with God's um, creation, right? This mm -hmm. is because he's going to be measuring, building the city. So it's just the building of a temple is a type of the creation of the world. And, in the, and he's really pointing to the recreation of the world because the idea of this temple really is it's, it's, I mean, it's symbolic of something. It's not talking about a real temple that's going to be built, as you said, mm -hmm. but it's symbolizing the end of the world. And we know that when we studied Ezekiel and the temple, that these all relate to time periods, um, mm -hmm. all these measurements. Yes. So maybe that's the key there. So if you go to the book of Revelation, chapter 11, uh, John there is told to rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But he's told, the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. So we have a period there, uh, 1,260 years. So John's told not to measure this period. 
Uh, in the context, in the previous chapter, he's had an experience where he eats a little book and it's sweet in his mouth and then it's bitter in his belly and then he's told to prophesy again and then this here angel comes and says, rise and measure the temple. So that bitterness, we understand, is relating to the disappointment in 1844 and then he's told to measure that temple but don't count to 1260. So therefore he's only going to go back until the end of that 1260, so from 1798 to 1844, and he's told uh, to measure that, to measure the temple of God and the altar. So there we have a 46 year period connected to a temple. And we've seen that in John chapter 2. Uh, the Pharisees say to Christ, 46 years has this temple been in building. We understand our, our bodies have 46 chromosomes and Paul says we are the temple of God so it's quite an established understanding that the number 46 symbolizes the temple and uh, Ellen White she comments, comments uh, in the one in Zechariah he also is told to measure the temple he I said uh, God sent a man with a measuring line in the hand to measure Jerusalem in the sight of his delegated prophet. So it's not Zacharias measuring, measuring it, it's the, uh, this here man, or we would say an angel. And he sent a message of another angel after him. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwelleth with the daughter of Babylon. So connected with this here measuring is we have a, a job to do from this these measurements to deliver ourselves from the Babylonian system. So there has, there's a meaning in all these here measurements. And we've seen that that 46 year period is the 50th 40 and 6 years from 1798 to 1844. And we have that 10th day, the 7th month, which connects us to this year date that we're reading about in Ezekiel chapter 40. And the 2,300 years is, first begins with 49 times 46 before that. So Theodore had already explained that. And um, I'll just uh, write this on the board. Just as, there's a structure I've seen with these here, 46 years. <coughs> that I'd just like to share. So... I'm noting from when Christ cleanses the temple. So this is when the 46 years are uh, discussed in John chapter 2. He's baptized in the autumn of 27 AD. And then he goes into the wilderness for 40 days. There's the wedding of Canaan. And then he comes in to Jerusalem and cleanses the temple for the first time. And this is where they say 40 and 6 years was this temple and building. So you can identify prior to that time, there's 46 years. Now, from that there time to when we identify there in Revelation chapter 11, John is going to measure that temple. He's going to count from 1798 to 1844. Um, 46 years there. <clears throat> so the number of years between them dates is 1770. And this is a significant date if we go back from uh, 2880. And we're going to sort of use this date 1798. as an inclusive count. And that will take us to the year 1770. And this was when uh, Joseph was taken captive to Egypt when he was 17 years old. And so he was born 17 years prior. And then 
1798. The Pope's going to be then taken captive. And he's going to France. But in Revelation chapter 17, France is called Sodom and Egypt. So in a sense, it's spiritual Egypt. <clears throat> and that Pope, he was born in the year 1717, which is like a doubling almost type thing with the Joseph year. And interestingly, it was on the you remember the date he was born? December 25th. Yes, so. And that's uh, Pope Pius VI. And um, we connect this year date to being symbolic of relating to song worship. Now, if we go back to 274 BC, we have, or not BC, sorry, AD, 274, we have the Emperor Aurelian. Aurelian, I think it's something like that. <coughs> I think it's uh, another A. Is that an A? Aurelian. I'll just think. Is it E? Yeah, I think that's right. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, looks better. <clears throat> so, 24, 274 AD. And um, he dedicates a temple to the sun god on the 25th of December. And that's uh, Sol Invictus, or the, to the unconquerable sun. <clears throat> and interestingly, if you add 1770, 1717 years, 1717 years to that, it takes us to 1991. And would the 25th of December have any significance yeah. in 1991? Yeah. Something happens on the 25th. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, it's the end of the Soviet Union. Yeah, so 777 days from November... 9th. 9th of November. 89. 1989. <clears throat> so 25th of December. So that relates to the collapse of the Soviet Union. And there, just um, I think of a quote just from Wikipedia. After his victories in the East, Emperor Aurelian, with an E, did you say? Yeah, it's correct. Uh, thoroughly reformed the Roman cult of Saul, elevating the sun god to one of the premier divines of the empire. Aurelian also built a temple for Saul, which was dedicated on the 25th of December, uh, 274. And also interesting in, in 538, so that's the beginning of the 1260, there's a Sunday law taking place in Orleans, in France. There's a, a council taking place, Council of Orleans, and they pass a Sunday law. And this, if you go to the date, 538 in Wikipedia, it's specifies this here event. Now this here world, uh, word Orleans is basically derived from uh, Aurelian. So it's basically saying the city of Aurelian in France. Mm -hmm. So I have here um, an image of Ezekiel's temple on the screen. So we have these here gates. This would be the east gate. Oh. The 
east gate, the south gate, the north gate. And then there's uh, inner gates as well. This would be the inner east gate. And this would be the main temple complex. And just here is the, the altar that is the subject of this here study that we're going to get to. And uh, before we get there, verse 5 in, in chapter 40, it says, And behold, a wall on the outside of the house round about, and a man's hand, a measuring reed of six cubits long, and in the man's hand, a measuring reed of six cubits long by the cubit and in hand breadth. So he measured the breadth of the building, one reed, and the height, one reed. So this is just appealing, uh, measuring the wall on the outside is uh, one reed by one reed. So six cubits long by the cubit and hand breadth. As Encyclopedia Britannica says that a cubit is a measure is a unit of linear measure used by many ancient peoples, generally taken as equal to 18 inches, based on the length of the arm from the elbow uh, to the middle, to the tip of the middle finger. In some cultures, it was as long as 21 inches. So, therefore, the actual length of the cubit is variable. In understanding the measurements of the tabernacle in the wilderness, an 18-inch cubit produces measurements that relate to other pertinent numbers in the Bible, such as 144 and 360, and would they therefore give us a measure of confidence to use that understanding of a cubit's length, even if it may have differed from the actual uh, cubit lengths of ancient times. So Ellen White, from her we can gauge that a cubit of over, of over, of over 19 inches so concerning Goliath, we are told that he measured six cubits in a span, or ten and a half feet in height. So ten and a half feet equates to 126 inches. A span is the distance measured by a human hand from tip of the thumb to the tip of the little finger. In ancient times, the span was considered to be half a cubit. So that's from Wikipedia. Uh, about a span. So therefore, 126 inches divided by 6.5 cubits equates to 19.384615 so, and so on inches per cubit in this instance. Then um, in Daniel chapter 3, Nebuchadnezzar set up a golden image whose height was three score cubits and the breadth six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Jura in the province of Babylon. So Ellen White says of this image, the statue was about 90 feet in height and nine in breadth. So here we can discern an approximate 18 inch length for a cubit. And then it talks about the hand breadth here. Uh, Merriam-Webster's dictionary gives it as between two and a half to four inches. Uh, Wikipedia says it can be rendered as three inches. So in taking a cubit as 18 inches in hand, hand breadth of three inches would render a cubit of 21 inches in this year instance concerning this year temple. <coughs> so a read of these yeah, cubits would equate to 126 inches, a number that has prophetic significance elsewhere in scripture. So 126 inches is also 10 and a half feet. So that there is going to be the measurement of uh, the cubit, 21 inches, in relating to Ezekiel's temple. I believe that would, that's how God would have us uh, to measure this temple and uh, on the altar. So we've uh, previously known a period of 666 years from this year, the siege of Jerusalem, or from the right from the the captivity of Jehoiachin in 597 BC to the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. And I just want to pick up this here 
way of dating this. So in the Julian calendar, it does say 597 BC. There we have the 16th of March. And that's been affirmed by archaeological finds. But I also just want to sort of make note of this here. Way in the, uh, measuring it in date form, it's from the, Jill, from the Gregorian calendar. It's wrote as uh, minus 596. So the Gregorian calendar uh, takes uh, account of the year zero. So I just sort of have out their number in mind when we look at uh, Ezekiel's altar. <coughs> and uh, Ezekiel has, he, he is a priest, so there's a lot of sanctuary uh, connections in, uh, in this year book. And there I'm just identifying the chapter numbers even seem to, uh, the way it's been set out, I know it's, these have been added uh, in later times, in the Middle Ages and so forth. But here we have a, a sort of a connection to even how the, uh, the tabernacle is. So in uh, his first vision, which begins on the fifth day of the fourth month, is actually seven chapters long. It's from chapters one to seven. And in the sanctuary, we have the seven-branch candlestick. Then the next vision is in chapter eight, verse one, and that continues to chapter 19. So there's a total of 12 chapters, and that relates to the 12 loaves of bread and the table of showbread. His next vision is chapter 20, verse 1, and that's four chapters, chapters 20 to 23. And that relates to the four horns of the altar of incense. And then in chapter 24, uh, that vision, uh, where I'm just identifying that one chapter, and that relates to the Ark of the Covenant. And that takes, takes place on the 10th day of the 10th month. And um, the Ark of the Covenant was in the most holy place. And the most holy place in the tabernacle was 10 cubits by 10 cubits. So you have there the 10th day of the 10th month connecting with the, the, the dimensions and cubits of the tabernacle. Now he is going to then have other visions related to that date. He then talks about, um, he prophesies against Moab, to Ammon, Edom, and so forth, but there he's, he's sort of done. At the end of that, he's no longer dealing with the people of God, and so therefore I'm just identifying that one chapter uh, relating to the most holy place. And uh, it is interesting, I thought, if you add up 54 relating to the fifth day of the fourth month, yeah, you add up again 56, the fifth day of the sixth month, and then 105, for the 10th day of the 5th month, and then 110, no, sorry, 1,010, for the 10th day of the 10th month. It gives us the number uh, 1225, which we could take as a symbol of December 25th. And we also find it all elsewhere, in the, popping up in this here, um, in the temple vision. So, if you take 20 cubits, so this is uh, chapter 41, verse 4. It says, so he measured the length thereof 20 cubits and the breadth 20 cubits before the temple. And he said unto me, this is the most holy place. So the most holy place was 20 by 20 cubits. So if you're going to take that as a 21-inch cubit, that would be 420 times 420. And if you want to get that to feet, you divide that by 12, so 12 inches and a foot. So that would be 35 times 35. And that uh, 35 times 35 gives you uh, the number one, oh, one, two, two, five. Um, so, Ezekiel, he's, he's really directing his prophecies to the destruction of Jerusalem in 586 BC. But he has in mind uh, further connections to 70 AD. 
And if you read about it in chapter 5, he takes, he's told to take his hair and cut it up into three parts. And part of it's going to be burned in the fire. Part of it's going to be, he's going to stab it with a knife. And then he's going to scatter part of that uh, to the wind and draw, draw a sword after him. And then he's going to take uh, a few part, a few in number, which are left, and bind them in the skirts. And then he's going to take them again and cast them in the midst of the fire and burn them in the fire. Thereof uh, shall come forth unto all the house of Israel. So this is like a remnant of a remnant is left at the end of this here. And uh, he later says in Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 8, And it came to pass while they were still while they were slaying them, and I was left, that I fell upon my face and cried, Ah, Lord God, wilt thou destroy all the residue of Israel in thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? So the imagery indicates how few from Judah would be spared. Ezekiel uh, uh, was used to give the end time Israel of God similar solemn considerations. She says, The church may appear... Is about to fall, but it does not fall. It remains while the sinners of Zion will be sifted out. The chaff separated from the precious wheat. This is a terrible ordeal, but nevertheless it must take place. For the church to appear as it, for the church to appear as about to fall indicates that a large percentage of the congregation will be separating themselves from its ranks. And then uh, later on in that dear chapter, it says in verse 9, um, so it says, I'll just read before that, maybe you could read for me, Theodore, just uh, from 5 to 10 in there. From which, which verses? Yeah, just this is Ezekiel chapter 5, 5 to 10. Oh, from 5 to 10. Thus saith the Lord God, this is Jerusalem. I have set it in the midst of the nations and countries that are round about her. And she hath changed my judgments into wickedness more than the other nations, and my statutes more than the con countries that are round about her. For they have refused my judgments and my statutes. They have not walked in them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Because ye multiplied more than the nations that are round about you, and have not walked in my statutes, neither have kept my judgments, neither have done according to the judgments of the nations that are round about you. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, am against thee, and will execute judgments in the midst of thee, in the sight of the nations. And I will do in thee that which I have not done, and whereunto I will not do any more the like because of thy, all thine abominations. Therefore the fathers shall eat the sons in the midst of thee, and the sons shall eat their fathers. And I will execute judgment in thee, and the whole remnant of thee will I scatter into all the winds. Okay, so I'm just picking up the highlight up right there. It says, I will not do that any more the like. So when he destroys Jerusalem in 586 BC, is that it never happens again? Is that the case? <laughs> it does happen again. It happens again in 70 AD. So therefore this cannot just apply to 586 BC. It has to have uh, another application in 70 AD. So I'm just going to now go to the, the part that concerns the, uh, the temple and the altar of specifically. So we read about that in Ezekiel chapter 43. Could you read that for me as well, please? And these are the measures of the altar after the cubit. The cubit is a cubit and a hand's breadth. Even the bottom shall be a cubit, and the breadth of a cubit, and the, and the breadth of a cubit, and the border thereof, by the edge thereof round about, shall be a span, and this shall be the higher place of the altar. And from the bottom upon the ground, even to the lower settle, shall be two cubits, and the breadth one cubit. And from the lesser settle, even to the greater settle, shall be four cubits and the breadth one cubit. So the altar shall be four cubits, and from the altar and upward shall be four horns. And the altar shall be twelve cubits long, twelve broad, square in the four squares thereof. 
and the settle shall be 14 cubits long and 14 broad in the four squares thereof, and the border about it shall be half a cubit, and the bottom thereof shall be a cubit about, and his stairs shall look toward the east. And you want me to read the next part too? And yes, thou yeah. shalt take the blood thereof and put it in the four horns of it, and on the four corners of the settle, and upon the border round about. Thus shalt thou cleanse and purge it. Okay. So I just want to pick up in the point there that says, we'll begin with concerning the, the altar itself. Shall be 12 broad and 12 long. So 12 cubits by 12. So obviously the area there is going to be 144, which is going to connect with 144,000 or the, the, the size of the wall that you read about in Revelation chapter 21, the, the New Jerusalem. And then it says it's going to be um, four cubits, so verse 15. So the altar shall be four cubits. From the altar upward shall be four horns. So there's going to be four horns here. And it's going to be four cubits. <clears throat> and the volume then is going to be 144 times 4, which is, someone got a calculator? You want to work that out? Well, it's going to be 5... 576. 576, five, thank you. So that, this would be the, the top part of the altar. Then the, um, the section um, in which that sets upon is called the greater settle. So it's described in verse 14. Well, it says, I'll just start, or it goes from verse 14, it says, I'm from the bottom upon the ground, even to the lower settle, shall be two cubits and one breadth cubit. And the lesser settle, even to the greater settle, shall be four cubits and the breadth one cubit. So what this is describing, there's a, another level uh, below this called the greater settle. A settle is basically uh, a, understood to be a ledge. Okay? So that's going to be a cubit like that, round about. So if that's one cubit there, that's going to be one cubit there. So in width wise, it's going to be 14 by 14. And that equals how much is 14 by 14? Is it uh, 196? So that's 196. So I'll write this over here: 144 for the alder, 196 for the next section, and that's going to be uh, gives you it there. So in verse 14 it says, "To the greater settle." shall be four cubits. So that's going to be four cubits as well. And so that there will be 196 times four, which equals... 784. 784. Okay. And then we had read from the bottom upon the ground even to the lower settle, this is verse 14, shall be two cubits, and the breadth one cubit. Okay, so you have there another settle, another ledge.
which is one qubit. So that's going to be four there. And this is one qubit. But it's saying it's going to be two qubits in height. So it's going to be one, one either side. So that's going to be 16 by 16, which equals 256. 256. And we're going to multiply out by 2, because this here is only 2 qubits. 512. OK, 512. So would you like to add for me uh, this here for me, Dwight, just what that gives us? Is that relevant in any way? <laughs> okay. And that's just the qubits we haven't converted to inches. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I want to move on now to the bottom. It says, uh, from the bottom upon the ground. So it doesn't mention any settle really at it to the bottom. So some people when they try to illustrate this, they'll put another bottom out here, and uh, like another ledge, but there, it doesn't mention a settle in this here bottom. It says, and from the bottom upon the ground, even to the lower settle, shall be, uh, so the bottom there is just saying, it's, to me I, I'm seeing this here as uh, something like a ditch, okay? So in verse 17, it mentions just the last section. It says, the bottom thereof shall be, one, shall be a cubit about. And then it mentions the stairs. But it says there in verse 17 also, um, I'll just read verse 17. And the saddle shall be 14 cubits long and 14 broad. So this is talking about this here uh, saddle here. So that's going to be 14 by 14. And then it says, in the four squares thereof, and the border about it shall be half a cubit, and the bottom thereof shall be a cubit about. So it could be that there's a border connected to that about it. It talks about it being half a cubit, round about it. So that's a possibility. But it could be just applying to the whole um, order itself, because in, in verse, uh, if you read verse 13, it says that uh, just halfway through, it says, the bottom shall be a cubit, and the breadth a cubit, and the border thereof by the edge thereof round about shall be a span. So, and then it says, and this shall be the higher place of the order. So the higher place of the altar, that to me gives an indication that this here is lower, a lower place in the altar in the sense it's underground. <clears throat> so that, that would be ground level. So this would be uh, like a ditch in here. That would be one cubit deep and one cubit in width. That's how I understand it. And it has this here half... Um, Yes. So it have, has it, what it says there in verse 13. The border thereof by the edge round about shall be a span. So there's something coming up here, which is a span high. <coughs> so... If, that goes above the ground, but the ditch is below the ground. Yes. So this would be, so, and then you'd have, so this would be like a, a deeper area, and then you, you'd have this here, half a cubit protruding above. Okay, so that's how I understand it. So if you're looking down on it,
That's uh, this would just be the ground, and that's this would be the ground, and you have this here ditch going round. So if that's going to be an extra cubit there, that will be added on. That will be 18 by uh, 18. If it was you're going to measure the area, but this here here will be 18 times one. So if you're going to measure the area, that there would be 18. This here would be 18 here. This section. This here section then you because that's already been counted, and that would be 16. And then that would be 16. So you have then uh, a total of an area, 68 square um, cubits. Okay, so I want you to add up for me the 144, which was the 12 by 12 from this here, and then the 14 by 14 is 196. And then the 16 by 16 is 256. So, what's that? 596. Okay, 596. And uh, I had reference that Ezekiel had pivoted his uh, dating from 597 BC. Okay. And the, um, the captivity of Jehoiachin. Okay. But what was that date in the Gregorian calendar? It's the 597 in the Julian calendar. Right. But what is it in the Gregorian calendar? The day after zero. The day after zero. Well, maybe you were not this. 596. <laughs> okay. It's, if you're going to count it in the Gregorian, it's, it's minus 596. Okay. So that connects with the same year in the Julian calendar is 597. So that's Gregorian and this would be Julian. So the top part then relates to the BC dates. Now the ditch I'm, I, it's just short of 70. So if you're going to add that, that would be 664 in total the area. So it's just short of 666. Right. Okay? If you're going to measure the perimeter, so that would be 18 times 18 for the whole thing. And that would give you, the, uh, sorry, not 18. That would be 18, 18, 18, and 18. So four, 18 times 4. Okay. Which is 72. Right. Okay? So the, the area is, is 72. Sorry, the area is 68, and the perimeter is 72. So in between then, the, the middle point of that there is 70, okay? Right. But if we were going to have this here area being 70, you'd, we're just so close here. You, you couldn't really do this by just saying one cubit. It has to be like a, a cubit and a very small amount extra. It's actually... It would have to be 68 cubits. Um, sorry, the measurement actually would rather than saying a cubit, it would have to be one cubit and one thirty-fourth of a cubit. That's how small an area would need to be added to make that 70 an area. Okay. Right. So that equates to. Point six one seven inches. It was just sort of maybe digging the ditch, just with that there. One point five six centimeters extra is all you need to do to make that up to seventy. Now this here border mm -hmm. is going about. We don't know. It's, it's not given. If this is a cubit, you then you have this here span that has to be built on something. You know, if you're going to have this here little protruding border, and if that there was half an inch, roughly, or just 0.6 of an inch, then that would make this here, um, the whole thing, would then be 1.1 1 .1 and 3 
34th of a cubit, which would then make our, and to, to, uh, give us the whole area of 666. And then that would apply to the area, sorry, from the time. Um, so you then you have, is it uh, 570, is it 590? Oh, no. <laughs> 5, um, 590, it's 596, okay. And then you have the 70 relating to, so the ditch in a sense is, is relating to the AD dates, or this here, from here to here, AD, and then from the, the other going up is uh, relating to the, the BC. So that's just uh, my thoughts on the, this here alter that it's relating to uh, this year's six period of 666 years. Okay, so we'll just uh, close with prayer. <laughs> Your loving God, we give thanks for your mercy and grace towards us. And we give thanks for the understanding that we can see in this here temple that maybe hasn't been revealed before, that this here relates to the 666 years. And I pray that uh, this be a blessing to those who are watching online and those who are watching at this here present time. And we ask your blessing upon Theodore as he seeks to present to us further upon the week of Christ and what you've been revealing uh, to him. And uh, may your blessing be upon him in that study as well. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.